वेलकम बैक टू माई पॉडकास्ट लिसनर्स वेयर इन एपिसोड सेवेंटी फोर एंड टूडे आई टेल यू अ लिल बिट मोर अबाउट माई एक्सपीरियंस एट सफाया कॉलेज दैट वुड गिव सम इंसाइट्स इन टू माई डिसीशन मेकिंग स्किल्स विच वर एसेंशियली जीरो वाइल आई वॉज ऑलवेज फैसिनेटेड बाई साइकोलॉजी आई वॉज इक्वली इंटरेस्टेड इन लैंग्वेजेस अनादर सब्जेक्ट वेर आई ऑलवेज स्कोर्ड फुल मार्क्स वॉज लॉजिक लॉजिक वॉज ऑफर्ड इन द एलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ स्टैंडर्ड इन जूनियर कॉलेज but i never came across it again anywhere nor was i told what could be done further in that subject in school no matter how well you did at that time you wouldn't score beyond the 70s percent in english and hindi the marking structure was like that in marathi you could score in the 80s because da you were in maharashtra and the state wanted to encourage students to take up marathi as a subject I considered myself an honorary Maharashtrian because da I grew up in Dapchuri learning Marathi before I learned English also living in Bombay gave me ample opportunities to speak Marathi the first time I had gotten full marks in anything was in English grammar when I had been given the form to enroll in Sophia college a senior student had kindly informed me that I needed to go to sister Sophia for counseling and then submit my form counseling i said why died and intimidated yes the girl smiled and walked away in reality sister sophia would help students to understand how to choose their subjects so i did not go to sister sophia simply because i was scared she was the senior most person after the principal and i was just intimidated so i thought if somebody insisted i would go to her otherwise i just wouldn't i looked at the form and started filling it I saw that the subjects Hindi and English were repeated they were mentioned in two different places I thought it was a mistake so I selected other than the compulsory Hindi and English I selected psychology obviously that's the reason I had changed colleges and then the Hindi English which were compulsory philosophy and political science when I went to submit my form the admin lady did not ask me if I had met sister sophia she just took the form if she had asked me things would have been quite different for me turns out english and hindi being mentioned in multiple places was not a mistake you could actually take hindi and english as subjects in addition to the compulsory bit had i known i'd have ditched philosophy and policy in a heartbeat I mean who wouldn't want like a double scoop of ice cream on their softy for me a double dose of hindi and english was like that it was like a double treat but i just did not know that i had an option to take it up as it turns out we had the worst philosophy teacher in the universe not even exaggerating i suspect she was a pity hire or related to someone in the college i don't know if she was related to the principal because the principal was also sister rodricks and this philosophy teacher was also ms rodricks or she was related to someone else but i know that she was not qualified and she was kind of just given that position but that woman would never have been a teacher or even a professional of any kind for that matter ms rodricks had just been hired the same year when i joined sophia college nobody understood what she was teaching she did not understand what she was teaching after a while we were given a survey form where we supposedly gave anonymous feedback about her the unanimous opinion was that she was not a good teacher the feedback about her was reflecting on her actual teaching everybody gave her a very very low score in terms of her suitability for that position but there were vested interests at stake and ms rodricks was shown the survey sheets by someone in the college the next day ms rodricks stormed into class with the survey sheets and started crying waving the survey sheets in front of us she asked us how we could be so cruel and mean we were shocked the survey was supposed to be confidential and should have been sealed and sent straight to management how did it get into the hands of ms rodricks This was corruption and dishonesty at play right in front of our eyes. Ms Rodrigues sternly asked us to put in positive feedback this time and distributed fresh forms, blank forms. There was a power inequity at play here. 
we were kind of intimidated, shocked and stunned at what was happening. The entire class quietly filled out a positive feedback about this person who should never have been a philosophy teacher. Recently, around 2018, I met a woman who was also from Sophia College. She was probably from the batch of 2010 or 2012, not sure. As we were discussing teachers, who taught her and who taught me, who wasn't there anymore, I started laughing as I recalled how bad of a teacher Ms. Rodericks was. I told this neighbor, who had also studied philosophy at Sophia College, how bad Ms. Rodericks was. I kept telling her, oh my god, you have no idea what a bad philosophy teacher we had. And I just told her all about Ms. Rodericks antics, like how she just couldn't teach and all of that stuff. And then I told her there's no way would this teacher still be there because she was already really old then. And I went on to tell her about the forged survey. Shocked, my neighbor said that her philosophy teacher was also Ms. Rodericks. And when we compared notes, it was the same person. She got the job and she just clung on to it. Only she had gotten worse with time. She would actually fall asleep in class. I was amazed at how many batches of students did not develop a love for philosophy, which, by the way, is an amazing subject to study. Just because someone at Sophia wanted their relative to have a job there by hook or crook. Another employee that I felt was not doing their job properly or did not deserve the position was the librarian. There were reference books at the library in addition to textbooks that we had bought. If the library had five or six reference books, there were about 30 girls who would all seek the exact same reference book when the teacher completed a topic and gave us the reference book list. At the first break after class, the girls would rush to the library to be the first ones to get that book and make their notes while the topic was still fresh in their minds. We were supposed to return these books the next day or the day after, I forget which. This was to allow the other students to have access to the books also because everyone needed them after that particular topic had been taught. One day, a batchmate, a girl called Namita, who also took the same subject, saw me going to the library to return the reference book. She got excited since she had yet to borrow one for the same topic. So she accompanied me to the library and as I returned the book, requested the librarian to issue it to her. The librarian started yelling at us, saying we were trying to be over smart and that in reality, I wanted the book for a longer duration, so I had brought a friend along who would borrow it on my behalf and just give it back to me. She refused to issue the book to Namita and we left the library confused. If the librarian had earlier come across students who were indeed tricking her like that, then she should have made the effort to have a list of subjects that each student was studying. That way she wouldn't unnecessarily inconvenience students who genuinely needed the reference books. So even though I absolutely loved the library, that love did not extend to the librarians. Back to the subjects. One of the first things done during the English class was we were given a test and categorized according to the results. This was so that the advanced level material and activities could be made available to the students who were at a more advanced level. So each group of students had the teaching material tailored according to where they currently were in terms of their skill at the English language. I was assigned the A group meaning I was in the top category for my language abilities. I was kind of shocked and found it hard to believe. Even though I had done very well in languages in school and always scored full marks in grammar, this is how childhood programming can be. My parents' conviction that I was a stupid kid combined with my low self-esteem or inferiority complex had me baffled to be in the A category for the English classes. I looked at all those glamorous South Bombay girls and I thought, how am I in the same category as them? Meanwhile, the Hindi teacher had conducted a test based on the poetry book that we were studying, Jayadrat Vad. It was about a particular chapter from the Mahabharat. I was absent the next day after the test. Later, I found out that I had aced the test I had scored the highest marks and the Hindi teacher wanted to meet me. I met the teacher the following day. She basically wanted to see who this student was that hadn't taken the Hindi optional subject but was so good that she aced the test. Till date, I regret not meeting sister Sophia for the counselling. For indeed, I would have loved to study more of Hindi and English languages. 
it would have been a breeze for me in fact it would have been positively joyful for me to study hindi and english as it turned out i had no interest in political science and the philosophy teacher was a bust worse psychology turned out to be a disappointment because it was in a very nascent stage and had a long way to go before it could claim to know anything for sure i was disappointed i had thought that psychologists or counselors had a lot more knowledge a lot more data but it turns out they're basically fumbling around in the dark and they really have to research a lot 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 more before we can claim it to be anything near an exact science like medical science so medical science is a lot more advanced and exact and precise as long as the doctor can diagnose correctly but the same can't be said for psychology i'm sorry and i was so disappointed when i attended classes and found out that we are still in the nascent stage so that was a huge disappointment another missed opportunity for me was mass media i had no idea what the term meant hence i had not selected it in my form in reality i was in awe of journalism and journalists had i known that there was an opportunity to study journalism i would have pounced on it of course if my low opinion of myself would allow it i thought journalism was something way beyond my reach or abilities and i just looked up to people who were journalists i was like wow they're probably so much smarter than me so much better than me when a girl mentioned that she was going to her mass media class i looked at her with awe and admiration she was a stony a well put together south bombay girl i couldn't imagine being in the same league as her even though in reality i was probably as good if not better qualified than her to study mass media the smallest thing can steer us towards or away from our destiny i feel that missing that counseling session with sister sophia cost me dearly in terms of my future opportunities i'd have loved to be a journalist or a writer or a translator i did try afterwards to change my subjects but that did not work out but underlying all of these things that were happening all these missed opportunities that would even happen later was my very very poor decision making skills these are not taught at school they're not taught at college uh there was one chapter called decision making in psychology class but there is no preparation for children for real life you don't teach them how not to be gullible you don't teach them how to make wise or smart choices you don't teach them financial planning how to handle their money we leave all of these important things to chance so people who come from a family of really sensible adults who already know these things and communicate it clearly to their children those kids just imbibe it naturally in those environments but in families like mine where the parents priority is to control the child and to kind of keep the child intimidated and scared where that is the priority in those families the child is not going to learn anything useful even though mom's efforts to make us street smart included saying things like oh lok ta enne tej ne kudiyan enni tej ne aa bhi kar lendiyan ne oh bhi kar lendiyan ne urdi chidi de par gin lendiyan ne her way of trying to smarten us up was to taunt us and compare us unfavorably to other people that's not the way you teach your child to become smarter that's simply not the way so till date i really don't have good decision making skills even though i did try and that has cost me so much so many times i'll tell you more about my experiences at sophia college in the next episode till then stay healthy stay happy bye for now dear listeners